What's up guys, Edrone here, and today we're going to be installing the Dow RC F405 flight controller on my reverb build. Stay tuned. Check out my playlist if you haven't already on this Impulse RC Reverb build. Um, so in the last video, we installed the uh, Dow RC Engine Pro 40 Amp ESC 4-in-1. And um, also uh, in another video, I showed you how to protect your uh, wires from prop strikes. So I'm going to link that video right here. Check it out, this flex tubing. So we went ahead and got the flex tubing installed. Uh, we got it zip tied down, and I think it looks really good. If you've been following along with this series, um, I'll try to keep you up to date the best I can. I did do a little bit of off-camera work. Um, what I did was I conformal coated uh, this 4-in-1 ESC. And for those of you who don't know, conformal coating, uh, silicone modified conformal coating will waterproof your electronics um, in case they get uh, wet from wet grass or rain or whatever. Um, so I'm going to put a link up here in the top right hand corner for a video showing you how to properly uh, silicone conformal coat your quads. Check that out. And let's move on to the flight controller. So this is the Dal RC F405 flight controller. And what's really nice about this is it uses the MPU 6000 gyro, which is less susceptible to vibrations and noise. It's going to be able to handle those vibrations a lot better. Um, and let's take a look at what we have in the packaging here. You can see they give you a nice static proof bag with the flight controller. And they give you four of these little gummies, which we're not going to be using these in this particular build. Actually, we're going to be using these four little uh, rubber soft mounted standoffs that go on top of the 4-in-1 ESC. Okay, taking the flight controller out of the bag, you'll see it's pretty compact. Uh, doesn't have a lot of extra uh, stuff going on, but you can see that we have the USB port with the bootloader button here on the side. Easy access. There's the arrow indicating which direction the board needs to be facing for it to be front facing. We have some camera pads here, some ground pads. The pads are actually decent size um, for a flight controller. And we have a 5-volt pad. We also have a 9-volt pad. Take a look underneath. You'll see we have some pins here. This is actually designed to plug right into this Dal RC engine with no soldering whatsoever. So that is really exciting. Uh, we have a couple pads underneath. We have a ground. We have a 3. We have a 3-volt here on the bottom. Uh, which we can use for being like a spectrum receiver. Another cool feature of this board is if you look right here, you'll see the 9-volt pad has been soldered. There's a little arrow pointing to this pad right here. So this pad you can change from either a 9-volt or a 5-volt pad. So it's nice that they give you that option. There's actually two of them. Here's the other one on the other side. And you can see the 9-volt has been soldered, indicating that this is going to be a 9-volt pad. So very cool that they give you the option of either using 5 volt or 9 volt in two different locations. You also have two separate buzzer pads, plus and minus right there. So that's nice as well. A very well laid out board. I like what I'm seeing here. Now, go ahead and install it. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and take the flight controller with the pins facing the front. And we're just going to push this on the top. Line up the standoffs, line up the pins, and push it right down onto the stack for a nice and neat, tidy stack. There's the pins there. Now, when we tighten down these nuts, we want to make sure they're nice and tight so that it pushes that pin header down securely. I'm not going to be using regular nylon nuts. I'm going to be using these nice steel nuts that came in this race day quads kit. I'll put down the uh, link in the description, but this is a really nice kit. has everything you need to, uh, to build or repair. I've used this kit so many times. It's been coming handy a lot. There will be a link down in the description for everything you're seeing today. And we'll go ahead and tighten down 
these nuts here. And once these are tight, it should give us a nice connection to our ESC. I'm just gonna go ahead and snug these up by hand first. Just four of them is all you need. One thing I really like about the MPU 6000 gyro is technically it doesn't have to be soft mounted because it's not very um, sensitive to vibration and uh, noise. But when you do soft mount it, it just makes it that much better. So we have it soft mounted. We also have the 4-in-1 ESC soft mounted. So that's going to give us a lot of vibration uh, reduction and we also have the motors soft mounted. So between the motors being soft mounted, the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller all soft mounted, this is going to give us a super, super clean build with, um, you know, minimum vibration um, traveling through the uh, frame and into the flight controller, which can lead to, um, you know, yaw twitches and sometimes can lead to poor performance when it comes to flying. Now, I'm just going to take these little pliers here, and I'm just going to give these a couple of turns just to make sure we have it nice and tight. You don't want to over-tighten it because if you get to the point where you're starting to squish the rubber standoffs, you're going too tight, and that's going to actually reduce the soft mounting effect that we're trying to accomplish here. But have those nice and tight. You can see the pins here in the front, good solid connection, and you just want to make sure that these nuts are nice and tight. And once these are all tightened down, got these nice and tightened down. And the good thing about these steel nuts is they don't break like those um, nylon ones do. So they're very uh, rigid and they're very rugged, a lot more durable. But there you go. There is pretty much the, the main stack. And I love where the technology is going. It's making it easier and faster to build and to repair. Um, you know, repairing this flight controller uh, is going to be fairly simple. You would just desolder all your uh, video components and your camera, and then you literally just pull the board up and you're done. You're ready to go ahead and pop in another one. So definitely liking this. Um, so now all we literally have to do is install our camera, our VTX, and our receiver, and this guy is going to be ready for a test flight. Uh, but what I'd like to do right now is, at, since we're at this point in the game, I would like to go ahead and, and, and put power to this and go ahead and fire it up for the first time. Uh, and we're going to see exactly how everything goes. Now, before we go ahead and power it up and check everything, there's, uh, there's something I like to do every time. And that is take my multimeter and set it to um, continuity. And what we're going to do is watch the multimeter when I touch these two together. See how we're getting a readout? That's what we don't want when we touch the positive and negative side of the battery terminal. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our leads, we're going to put ground on ground, and power on red. And you see we did get a number at first, but then it, it went away. Now that's due to the capacitor. So, when you first put a little bit of a charge in the system from these from the multimeter, the capacitor actually backfeeds it and that gives you a little bit of a readout, but as long as we don't have a, a readout as we're holding it on here the whole time, we know we don't have any shorts in our system. Now you can do the same thing with ESCs. So what you can do is take one of your motor pads and touch it. Okay, you can see that this system is together which is good because this is one motor. Now, if we do the same thing for the a different motor, watch what happens. We get no reading, and that's good. You don't want there to be a reading between two different motors. That means that you have solder that is bridged between two separate motors. So now that we've done the multimeter check, 
I'm pretty confident that uh, it will be okay to go ahead and plug in power. However, just for another added precaution, go ahead and get you a smoke stopper. This one here actually uses a fuse, a uh, two amp fuse. And if there's anything in the system that is shorted out and takes more than two amps, it's, it will blow this fuse before hopefully it damages a component on your build. And it has a nice little LED light here as well. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna plug the one end in to our XT60. And this is the first time I have applied power to the system. So what we're hoping for is a nice chime. Uh, the motors will all chime up, giving us a good reading. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And we have success. Sounds good. We actually have some LEDs flashing on the flight controller. So everything sounded great. Take our multimeter and put it to DC volts, 20 volts. And now we're gonna just double check these pads and make sure that we're getting the proper voltage. This pad right here should be nine volts. So we're gonna take the ground and just ground it to any ground on the system and touch this pad. 9.59 volts. And this multimeter is not the com most completely accurate multimeter, but it does the job. So we know that we're getting 9 volts to that pad. So that's a good thing because that's where it's soldered up. And let's go ahead and check our 5 volt pad. 5 volt pad. We got 4.75. Here's the 3.3 volt pad. It's reading correctly. So everything seems to be reading out correctly. The voltages are uh, close, if not very, very close. So now we know we are good to go ahead and wire up our VTX camera and our receiver and get this baby ready for a flight. All right, 16.98 volts coming in. So the, the multimeter is reading a little high. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check out my playlist on the Reverb build for everything we've done to this so far. Until next time, guys, E-Drone, out.